In this recording, I'm going to show how to add a combo box to a form to add records. This is a technique that the New Perspectives book has been showing people how to do for quite a while, and I think it's pretty, pretty slick, and so on, but it can be a little complicated if you're not careful, so I'm going to show you how. Once again, I'm going to use my Pizza Orders database. If you haven't been following along with the previous forms, uh, you'll probably be okay, but I am going to be using form customer orders as a starting point. So if you don't have that form, that might think, make things a little more complicated. <clears throat> Here's the form that we created. It has, allows me to enter customer information, change their phone number, update their first, last names, and also shows all the orders that they've placed. And as you navigate through, everything here changes. Uh, what the book recommends is you know, navigating through. If I'm looking for somebody, somebody's order here, I could go next, 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 next forever, uh, and it could be kind of complicated to find it. Yes, I can do a find. Yes, I can do filtering to say only show me the orders for Volker Gall, only show me the orders for Adam Sandler. That can help things. Another technique, though, is to add a combo box up here and pick the customer's name from that list. So first thing I want to do, though, and this is something the book doesn't describe very well, is whenever you add a title like this, it's often way too big. So I'm going to use my shift up arrow key to shrink that down so it's no bigger than it needs to be. And now I'm going to switch to design view because I'm going to add a combo box. Now remember from the previous recordings that layout view does not give you access to these wizards. Uh, these control wizards are turned on by default. You can turn them off, but that seems crazy to me because there's a lot of stuff that I can almost hardly not even do without them. And the layout does not include these wizards. All right, so I want to add a combo box. So here's my combo box. Where do I want to put it? Remember that this is where the combo box goes. The label's automatically added to the left a little bit. So let's park it here. And one of the things I forgot to do, let me cancel that and delete that combo box. I forgot to check to make sure that my form's record source, so I'm going to select the form. That's what this button, way up here at the top next to the ruler. Now make sure its record source is a table and not a select command. If this is a select command, this technique of putting a combo box in the header doesn't work, so you need to make sure this is your primary table. And mine is now, so that's cool. So one more time, combo box, put it here, and if you don't have that set as a table, this third option doesn't show. I want to find a record in my form based on what I pick in this combo box. Next. Notice you don't get to pick which table, which query, etc this data is coming from. So we have to use the data that's on the form. I, I tried manipulating this a little bit using queries and it fails miserably. So if I'm going to look up customers here, I want to see their last name and then their first name, uh, maybe their phone number, I don't think so, but I think, but I definitely need their ID number because again that's the linking field that ties this combo box into the customer on the form which customer do you want to see? I need to use the ID number. So I always have to have the ID number in there. This is coming from a table, so Access offers to hide the ID number. That's good. And these first name, last name are probably okay the way they are. I could probably shrink them down. I think they'll fit. Okay. Next. What do we want to call or what label do we want for this? I'm going to say select customer finish and there's my combo box. Initially it says unbound but that's only in design view. We'll look at it here in just a second but this is a little out of alignment with that so I think I'm just going to eyeball it here with my arrow keys. That looks better and I know my customer names are fairly long so I'm going to stretch this to start with and then go to design view or layout view excuse me and now I can select a customer from here. Uh, not in layout view, you've got to be in design view. I can select a customer, and here they are. Uh, wait a minute, why are these sorted by first name? Uh, the answer is I don't know. I don't know why these are sorted by first name, but I am going to show you in just a second how you can rearrange these. But let's take a look at how what Bill Gates has ordered by selecting his name, and notice the data here changes and the pizzas that he orders shows up. Bill Gates uses 50 cent coupons. Kind of hard to believe, but we'll go with it. Okay. every time you click a different name here. So it's very convenient for finding names, except these aren't alphabetized. And the book doesn't talk about this, and the book likes to put ID numbers here, and I think their apps are absolutely useless. 
Because why would you know a tour's ID number? Why would you know a customer's ID number? You have to look them up. I look them up by name, right? not by ID number. I need to have the ID number to link it to the form, but I don't want to see that in here. But I don't like these sorted this way. The book doesn't talk about it because it doesn't have to. So how do I reorder these? The way to reorder these is to select your combo box. And notice in the row source, there is a select command. This is an SQL command. Everything that's done in Access is based on a language called SQL, Structured Query Language, that is a relatively standard language used in all database programs, not just Access, but Oracle, MySQL, MS SQL, all these other database programs use a fairly common uh, SQL language. And here it is. And let's take a look at what's in there. Um, in Access, when you click on the SQL, you don't even get to see the SQL. You see a, a grid. Right? And that's handy. We'll use that here in just a second. But here's what's actually behind the scenes. There's a select command that says select the customer ID, the last name, the first name from the customer's table. But what it doesn't include is a command to sort. And if you know SQL, you could type this. But as it turns out, we could go back to design view here of this query and say, I want to sort by last name and then by first name. And if we check the SQL again, now it's added a new clause to the bottom, order by customer last name, first name. If we close this, it'll probably give us a warning saying you want to update the SQL for your lookup. Yes, that's why I'm here. And now this select command, if we go to the end of it, has the order by clause on it that wasn't there before. Should be coming up next. There it is. Right, so it has the order by clause. And now when I go to design view and drop this list down, now they're sorted alphabetically by name. So that should make it pretty easy to find the customer that I want. I can scroll around, look for them, and get the information that I need. Right. So this is a very handy technique, I think, for selecting things in a form. I've added it to most of my forms when I have access forms. Very convenient, quick way to select records, and not only the records, but the linked records in the subform at the same time.